In space, satellites have been damaged, causing loss of signals. Imagine no TV. Imagine all cell phones stop working. But it's not just electrical damage and radio blackouts that these storms can cause. They can also increase the risk of radiation. Solar storm radiation is potentially dangerous for passengers on airplanes. But this radiation poses even greater dangers for astronauts out in space. Late October 2003. Three huge sunspots appear on the sun's surface, one the size of planet Jupiter. A giant solar flare erupts from the surface of the sun, pointing straight toward Earth. And high above the ground, astronauts on board the International Space Station find themselves directly in the path of the deadly radiation the sun unleashes. Scientists know that the sun was born over four and a half billion years ago. That's dawn on our sundial. It's now 1036, and scientists have only learned about solar radiation in less than the last second. We all experience one form of solar radiation. It's sunshine, made up of ultraviolet light. Too much sunshine can cause sunburn and skin cancer. But the ozone layer protects us by blocking out the most harmful effects of UV radiation, and sunblock can do the rest. But there's one place where the type of solar radiation is much harder to protect against. Space. Space travel has always been dangerous. But when astronauts first ventured beyond the Earth's atmosphere, they didn't know as much about solar storms and the radiation they caused. On August 7th, 1972, Big Bear Observatory in California monitored this flare. We now know it caused one of the largest solar radiation storms ever recorded. It's a legendary event at NASA, because luckily it happened in the gap between Apollo 16's flight to the moon in April and Apollo 17's eight months later. You are go for orbit, go for orbit. Had it occurred during either of these flights, radiation might have killed the astronauts. Scientists know that intense solar storms can be as dangerous to astronauts as the gamma radiation from nuclear blasts. Solar flares release a cascade of high energy particles known as protons. Protons can pass through the human body, potentially causing chromosome damage and even cancer. Large doses of radiation can be fatal. And today, 30 years after the Apollo missions, NASA relies on space weather forecasts to protect astronauts against these dangers. While training to go into space, like most of us, astronaut Mike Fole had no idea how volatile the sun could be. I thought I knew about the solar system and the environment, but there was, when they talked about space weather, I went, space weather? What could that be? Late October 2003, on board the International Space Station, Foles about to find out exactly how dangerous space weather can be. The sun erupts in a series of events so powerful that they become known as the Halloween storms. October 28th, Boulder, Colorado. At the Space Environment Center, they watch the second largest flare on record explode from the center of the sun. The problem was the location of it. It was what we would call in the kill zone, where all the energy's coming straight out toward the Earth. In the line of fire is the International Space Station and Mike Fole. Larry Coombs has to warn NASA. We were constantly in contact with NASA, as well as they were back and forth with us. And NASA immediately warned Fole of the danger. They tell him to go to the most protected part of the station, the crew compartment 
which is lined with polyethylene shielding. It offers some protection from radiation, although no area is completely safe. Now you're in survival mode. You just deal with reducing the immediate deathly effects at that moment. In two days, Mike Fole experiences as much radiation as he would normally receive in a week. The equivalent of being bombarded by dozens of x-rays on Earth. But it could have been a lot worse. If he had gone outside during the storm, he would have suffered acute radiation sickness, causing nausea and cellular damage within 10 minutes. We're currently at 10.36 on the sundial. By 11.30, it'll be too hot for humans to handle. Our sun is getting hotter. Since its birth four and a half billion years ago, its brightness has risen by 30%. And scientists predict that it'll get even hotter. Evaporating our oceans, melting the surface of the Earth, and ending life as we know it. But how? We know when the sun was born. How it nurtured us. And how it has also thrown a fair amount of danger our way. But that's nothing compared to what happens to life on Earth as the sun heats up and dies. Unleashing an inferno that will threaten the survival of humanity on Earth. Death Valley in California, one of the hottest places on the planet. It provides a hint of what the sun holds in store for all of us. Astronomer Don Brownlee shares his vision of that fiery future. It's an extremely hot day here in Death Valley, but in fact, in the future, the entire planet will become much hotter than this. As the sun ages, it gets brighter and brighter and brighter, about 10% every billion years. Step into the sun's distant future. The hydrogen fuel is slowly running out, but the nuclear reactions at the heart of the sun are not slowing down. They're speeding up. Pressure at the core drops as the fuel is burned. Lower pressure no longer holds the forces of gravity at bay. Now gravity compresses the core, which heats the hydrogen up even more and makes the fuel burn faster. This increases the pressure coming from the core. The two forces balance again. But it's a cycle that continues as more fuel is burned and the sun gets hotter and hotter. Eventually, the sun will get so hot, it'll actually melt the surface of our planet, believe it or not. On our sundial, shadowing the course of the sun's life from its birth at 6 in the morning to its death at 6 p.m., we are now at 10.36 a.m. At the moment, Earth is ideally placed in the solar system. It's not too hot or cold. As the sun heats up, the danger zone will move outwards, scorching the Earth. This will start a catastrophic chain of events that reads like the ultimate disaster movie. We'll lose our jungles, forests, and farmland as the desert grows, turning the surface of the planet into a giant series of sand dunes. Animals will be the first to be hit by the growing heat. They can't protect themselves as easily as humans can. Now things go from bad to worse, much worse. The increased temperature speeds up the removal from the atmosphere of the carbon dioxide that plants need to survive. Plants virtually disappear uh, from this planet, and anything that eats plants for a living uh, also goes with it. The glowing heat that gave us life now becomes so strong that it kills off the rich diversity of life on Earth. And as plants disappear, the oxygen they produce declines, making it harder for humans to breathe we'll also lose most of our food supply. But even at this stage, some humans will probably still be around. People are very adaptable and very wiry. I think it's very likely that...